Away out west, there was this fella. Fella I want to tell you about. A fella by the name of Jeff Lebowski. Let me explain something to you. Um, I am not Mr. Lebowski. You're Mr. Lebowski. I'm the dude. So that's what you call me, you know? The dude shuffled into theaters 20 years ago today, and in the years since, the big Lebowski has grown into the rug that ties modern cinema together. A. This guy peed on it. Donnie, please. I'm Andrew, and today I'm observing the day of the dude with a look into the film's origins, its real-life inspirations, and its fanatical cult following, all to explain how the big Lebowski was born. After the all-time classic Raising Arizona, the Coen brothers' next three films were huge financial disappointments, especially the Hudsucker Proxy. You know, for kids. It cost $25 million, the Coens' biggest budget yet, and made just under three mil at the box office. It was a career low point for the brothers, but the Coens abide. I don't know about you, but I take comfort in that and started working on two new scripts. The first was a stoner detective story set in LA, which the Coens put on the back burner because it was too bizarre. The other became Fargo, which is a pretty goddamn strange movie too, and one of my favorites. You see something down there, Chief? No, I just think I'm gonna barf. Jeez. Not only did it nab the Coens their first Oscar, it made some serious bank and restored the brothers' confidence in their weirder ideas. Ethan Cohen said that if a movie like Fargo can succeed, then nothing makes sense. So you might as well just make the movie that you want and hope for the best. And the movie they really wanted to make was a surreal tribute to just taking it easy. Sometimes there's a film that, well, it's the film for its time and place. Sometimes, oh hell, I done introduced it enough. Let's talk about making the big Lebowski. The Coens are actually big fans of Raymond Chandler. He's an author of detective classics like The Big Sleep and The Long Goodbye. So they structured Lebowski like one of his hard-boiled crime novels, where a stoic PI meets a conga line of criminals and kooks on a deadly journey through the city of angels, Los Angeles. Only the Coens decided to replace the whiskey-guzzling Humphrey Bogart badass with a laid-back stoner in jelly sandals who'd much rather down a tasty Caucasian. Mm. Let's talk about the dude. The Dude was based on an indie movie promoter named Jeff Dowd, who was a member of a radical 60s anti-war group called the Seattle Seven, just like The Dude. His nickname, his mannerisms, and his love of comfy sweaters made for an extremely likable protagonist. I mean, seriously, who doesn't like The Dude? Oh, nice marmot. But unlike John Goodman and Steve Buscemi, who the Coens wanted from the start, they actually had no idea who would play The Dude. That's f***ing interesting, man. That's f***ing interesting. For a while, they were toying with the idea of casting Mel Gibson. But asshole that he is, he never took their pitch seriously. Shame on you. Instead, the Coens turned to the mellowest man in movies, Jeff Bridges. You mind if I do it, Jay? It didn't take much to transform the already super chill star into the dude. He even wore most of his own clothes in the movie, including a shirt that he already wore in The Fisher King. Bridges did make one sacrifice, though, and it's a doozy. During the shoot, Hollywood's most prestigious pothead abstained from the reefer. Let me repeat that. Jeff Bridges was dead sober when he played the most iconic stoner in movie history. He wanted to keep his head clear, so he'd just furiously rub his eyes so that they'd be red when the cameras rolled. The dude is an icon, but a man's only as good as the company he keeps. Lucky for him, the Coens came up with the perfect foil. A friend who provides safety. <laughs> security. Who am I? I'm the guy that's gonna kick your phony go brick and ass, that's who I am. And who can get you a toe if you need a toe. Hell, I can get you a toe by three o'clock this afternoon with nail polish. Walter Subcheck. The character of Walter is kind of the genesis for the whole movie. The Coens went to a party thrown by studio exec Peter Exline, who had just bought a beat up old rug and bragged over and over about how it tied the room together. Yeah, man, it really tied the room together. That rug really tied the room together, did it not? This rug I have, it really tied the room together. Uh, really tied the room together. 
At the same party, the Vietnam vet, X-Line, told the Coens a story about the time his car was stolen, and the only clue left behind was some eighth grader's homework. So he put the paper in a plastic baggie and drove to the kid's house to let him know that he crossed the line. See what happens, Larry? Now, we don't know if this kid's name is actually Larry or if he learns what happens when you find a stranger in the Alps. This is what happens, Larry. You see what happens, Larry? You see what happens when you a stranger in the Alps? But the incident gave the Coens the seed they needed to start their screenplay. They wrote the role of Walter for John Goodman based on his awesome performance in their other film, Barton Fink. But his look and personality came from another Hollywood legend, writer and director John Milius. Milius is low-key one of the most influential screenwriters ever. He wrote Apocalypse Now and Dirty Harry and Quint's monologue in Jaws. You know the monologue I'm talking about. You know the thing about a shark? He's got lifeless eyes. Black eyes, like a doll's eyes. On top of that, he wrote and directed Conan the Barbarian, helped create HBO's Rome, and was even instrumental in forming the UFC. The Octagon Cage was his idea. Beyond his professional pursuits, Milius is also a right-wing gun nut who served on the NRA Board of Directors and got paid for screenplays in the form of antique weapons. When I did the second movie, I said, I want one of those guns. Clint and uh, Warner Brothers publicity guy arranged to, to get that, and they put a plaque on it and everything. Crazy, but not really surprising considering this is the dude who co-wrote and directed Red Dawn. Milius prefers to call himself a Zen anarchist. I mean, say what you want about the tenets of National Socialism, dude. At least it's an ethos. But either way, a guy like him stands out in Hollywood. I hear Millions pull a gun on some executive. I like John because he says what he thinks, although I sometimes worry that he doesn't think. <laughs> <laughs> and he made a big impression on the Coens. They wanted to cast Milius as Jack Lipnick in Barton Fink, but when that fell through, they based Walter on his brash persona and basically copied his entire look. Seriously, the crew cut, the glasses, the beard, the khakis. Walter's a composite of a few different people, but when he looks in the mirror, that's John Milius staring back. You think I'm fucking around here, Mark and Zero? Now, if you've seen the movie, you know that the Big Lebowski lives and dies on the strength of its characters, from meek and mild little Donnie to Maud's strongly vaginal art. I hope you don't mind me using the word vagina. The word itself makes some men uncomfortable. Vagina. Oh yeah? And the best on-screen Jesus since Willem Dafoe. You said it, man. Nobody f with the Jesus. It's a pretty good story, don't you think? I mean, it made me laugh to beat the band. Parts, anyway. But when The Big Lebowski came out in 1998, it was actually roundly rejected. After all, it's a very complicated movie, you know, a lot of ins, a lot of outs, a lot of what have you. You know, it, it, this could be a, a, a lot more uh, 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 complex. I mean, it's not just, it might not be just such a simple, uh, you know? What in God's holy name are you blathering about? The critics were brutal. Gene Siskel compared it unfavorably, by the way, to Kingpin, a very bad movie, if you ask me. Kingpin was a much funnier film set in the world of bowling. Jeff Bridges' character wasn't worth my time. There's no heart to him, like, say, the Francis McDormand character in the Cone Brothers Fargo. The Big Lebowski, a big disappointment. What are you talking about? Did you and I watch the same movie, Gene Siskel? Did you? This will not stand, you know? This aggression will not stand, man. He's, he's dead, Andrew. Well, I didn't know that. Rest in peace, Gene Siskel. Meanwhile, at the box office, Titanic was in its 12th consecutive week at number one. I'm the king of the world! <laughs> and Lebowski debuted in a pitiful sixth place. It barely recouped the $15 million budget when all was said and done. Where's the f***ing money, shithead? A budget that would have been even bigger, by the way, if it wasn't for the fact that the Rolling Stones let the Coens use dead flowers for free. In gratitude for shitting on the Eagles, I hate the f Eagles, man. And replacing their most famous song with a way less farty mariachi version by the Gypsy Kings. Seriously, the Gypsy Kings do Hotel California so much better than the Eagles, it's actually stupid. The movie was another bomb for the brothers, unfortunately, but their next film, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou, was a huge hit and solidified their rep as bankable directors. As for The Big Lebowski, slowly but surely it grew into a film nerd staple that today is quoted just as much as The Simpsons or Monty Python. It began with midnight screenings and exploded into a massive fandom. Now, just like Trekkers, Whovians, Potterheads, Lebowski fans even have their own special name. 
achievers. Shit, yeah, the achievers. A little Lebowski urban achievers, yes, and proud we are of all of them. It's very clever. Today, there are tons of ways to celebrate the film. For example, you could always take the Lebowski challenge and down a white Russian every time the dude enjoys the tasty beverage on screen. Mm. That's milk and coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're not a fan of abiding alone, you should mosey on down to your local Lebowski Fest. It started in Louisville, Kentucky in 2002, when a couple of achievers threw a party at their local bowling alley. They only expected about 20 people to come, but over 150 fans showed up. We begin to realize that there's a community out there, a very, very large community of people with feeling towards a fantastic movie that was created by the Coen brothers. And it's been an annual tradition ever since. Lebowski Fests are held in cities all across the country. They feature musical performances, costume contests, unlimited bowling, and even the occasional appearance from Jeff Bridges and the rest of the cast. But if a two-day bowling bonanza doesn't satisfy your devotion, maybe you'll find the answers in dudeism an honest-to-dude religion based on the film. It mixes traditional Taoism with the movie's laid-back philosophy, and while it's not taken super seriously, today you can actually go online, get ordained, and legally preside over a marriage, a funeral, or even a bowling tournament as a dudist priest. Sign me the f up. <laughs> it's free, too. It's free? Yeah. It's my favorite word. Yeah. Dudism has over 350,000 followers across the globe. This cult classic has literally spawned a cult. And what more can you hope for, honestly? We are designed to be in tribes of people, of 100 to 200 people, and to look out for each other. To always check in to see what condition my condition is in. To always check, check in. in. What started as a bizarre box office bomb has grown into a worldwide religion backed by 20 years of beautiful tradition. It's a great film to discover, and there's a lot of support out there for those uh, discoverers, you know, for those little uh, urban achievers or whatever you want to call yourselves. I don't know about you, but I take comfort in that. It's good knowing it's out there. The Big Lebowski taking her easy for all us nerds. Yeah, well, the dude the binds. Thank you guys so much for watching. The Big Lebowski was a gigantic influence on me as a film student. And now I wanna know like your opinions, man. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Is there another Coen Brothers film you like better? Leave a comment. Please subscribe to Now This Nerd. And remember, this isn't Nam. This is YouTube. There are rules.